And joining me now is the executive director of Iranian Americans for Liberty, Brian Leib, and former deputy assistant secretary of state and senior advisor to the Iran envoy, Len Kotorkovsky. Gentlemen, thank you so much uh, both for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us, Rob. Of course, yeah. Brian, I want to start with you. You and Len have this, this great primer on all this available at Newsmax.com. We really uh, hope people will read. Here's what every American should know about the Islamic Republican Republic of Iran. Uh, it's a great article. I read it today. And you write, in fact, the continuation of the revolution at home and abroad is part of the Iranian regime's constitution. And I just want you to explain exactly what that sentence means there. Yeah, first off, Rob, thanks for having me on. And uh, I wish more members of Congress were, were listening to this show and to that opening monologue that you just had, because, uh, you know, you're absolutely right. All the stories that you see for the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, have not produced uh, any type of result for the American people. Uh, and that's why Len and I came together to write this piece, because we think that if more American people and your, your viewers knew about the atrocities that were happening every single day in Iran, then maybe people would actually start raising their voices, speaking out, uh, and saying that diplomacy with the world's leading sponsor of terrorism is not good for the everyday American person. Fair enough. Len, Ibrahim Raisi, the new president-elect, promises not to budge an inch on the negotiations over the Iran deal. We just talked about it a second ago. Uh, does that actually work kind of in our favor, though, as, as we watch the Biden administration try and push for this deal again, uh, maybe it's out of their reach now. And that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Um, I'm afraid not, Rob. Um, okay. I, I think the um, the deal that the Biden administration is trying to get back into is a terrible deal for American national security. And that's why Brian and I felt so passionate about it, to, to let people know exactly what's happening here. Uh, the uh, election of the butcher of Tehran can only be described as a big middle finger by the Ayatollah to yeah. the American people and the Biden administration, because he's very confident that the Biden administration is going to give away the store, is going to provide them with billions of dollars to cause more terrorism, as you noted in your in your uh, uh, remarks earlier. Sure. And so it's a win-win for them, and it's a lose-lose for the United States and the American people. So, so Len, if I'm understanding you correctly, you don't think that that this new president is going to hinder at all the Biden administration's mission to get back in this deal? You don't think that, it, it, that, that maybe they'll just cut bait on this whole thing? Uh, well, I, I, I don't think they'll cut bait. I think the Biden administration mm. is insisting on getting back into the deal because they feel that brands them as the big diplomats who are, um, you know, who are reversing all of President Trump's uh, policies. And in fact, they're going to weaken American national security. And, and the Ayatollah Khamenei knows that. Right. He's the one that's pulling all the strings. And he's the one who's squeezing the Biden administration for every possible concession he can get. And, and Brian, this is, this is now going to be, I mean, it's always, or not always, but it has been for the last few decades, been a pretty radical place. Uh, it's going to be a more radical government with this new president installed, won't it? Yeah, of course it is, Rob. Yeah. And the only thing that we can we can set our clocks to with the election of the butcher is that Iran will continue to fund states uh, uh, terrorists all around the world, as you mentioned, from Hamas to Hezbollah to the Houthis. They will continue uh, to oppress their own people inside of the Islamic Republic of Iran, uh, and they'll continue uh, to isolate themselves from the entire world. I don't think a lot of people really understand how isolated the Islamic Republic of Iran is throughout the entire world, very similar to North Korea. Not a lot gets in and not a lot gets out. And just to briefly touch on the maximum pressure campaign uh, that President Trump uh, launched, it's worth noting that in 2018, uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran had around $120 billion of international reserves. Mm. And it was recently reported by the IMF uh, that the uh, Islamic Republic of Iran's uh, international reserves were down to four billion dollars, and while four billion dollars, uh, you know, might seem like a lot of money uh, to us, to to the regime, four billion dollars was yeah. pennies to them. They were getting down to the nubs, and President Trump's campaign to maximum pressure certainly was working. Uh, and, I, and I think that Len and I are both in agreement that we would love to see President Biden continue forward 
with the maximum pressure and with the economic yeah. sanctions. Len, I mean, if it did continue on and, and we, you know, could, could we effectively starve this regime out of power? Would it get so bad uh, that perhaps an uprising would occur and they could, they could finally push this regime out after all these decades? I think what we tried to do when, uh, when, when during the Trump administration is to make a, a, a distinction between our policy toward the regime and our policy toward the people of Iran. Yeah. And uh, what we've ended up accomplishing, as Brian alluded to, is uh, depriving the world's top state sponsor of terrorism, which, and I, and I have to uh, emphasize that, this is what the Iranian regime is. It's the world's top state sponsor of terrorism. And it's not just me saying it, it's the State Department saying it for the last 40 years. Hmm. And so we, what we've done is we've deprived them of money to feed to Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthis and Assad to create havoc in the region. And so uh, the and what that led to, it led to a lot of support from the Iranian people. In fact, Iranian people took to the streets every single year during the Trump administration. In fact, November 2019, protests in Iran were uh, some of the biggest and most uh, uh, aggressive all across the country. Uh, that led to a massacre of about 1,500 people by the regime. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Len Kodakovsky, uh, sir, thank you so much for the time. Brian Leib, you as well. Thank you guys so much uh, for doing this. And, and the, uh, of course, the article you guys wrote is on Newsmax.com. It is really interesting. I mean, if you want to get into foreign policy and some of the important stuff, this new president and this threat from Iran is not getting any better. And it's a scary time to have an administration like Biden in the White House. That's for sure. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thanks, Thank Rob. You, Rob. All right.